I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you about the foundation of all nutrition, and that is digestion. So you've often heard the adage that you are what you eat. I personally have never liked this piece of wisdom, and instead what I often say to people is, you are not what you eat, you are only what you digest. You can eat whatever you like without adequate digestion to allow these nutrients to break down and be absorbed properly. Nothing will really get done for you. The digestive system and the breakdown of food is the essence of health. So without digestion, these nutrients will not be absorbed and then your cells and tissues go without what they need to do their job. So one way to maximize digestive care is to take digestive enzymes. So there are two primary categories of enzymes when discussing the breaking down of food. Typically it's plant enzymes and then digestive enzymes. Plant or food enzymes include protease, which digests protein, amylase, which digests carbohydrates, lipase, which I've talked about before, in the digestion of fat, and then other enzymes like maltase, sucrase, and lactase, which break down different kinds of sugar. So these food-derived enzymes help to pre-digest the food. Digestive or pancreatic enzymes like pepsin, trypsin, lipase, protease, and amylase are mostly produced in the pancreas and secreted in the GI tract to finish the job of digestion. Although our body makes pancreatic enzymes, their production, like everything else, diminishes the older we get. Furthermore, they're not meant to be the body's sole source of enzymes. Food enzymes will give the pancreas a much-needed and well-deserved rest from having to compensate for inadequate pre-digesting. So when you eat a processed or overcooked meal, the enzymes in that food are neutralized, so the pancreas has to overwork, and over time this can lead to pancreatic dysfunction. This type of diet actually robs the enzymes that would have been otherwise used to support glands and other essential functions, and this is something that Dr. Edward Howell, a pioneer in the research of enzymes and digestion, was very adamant about, relying too heavily on the pancreas for all digestive needs actually shortens your lifespan, according to Dr. Howell, and this actually increases illness, creates an enlarged pancreas over time, and lowers your resistance to all types of stress. So a lack of enzymes obviously hinders digestion, causing carbohydrates to ferment, proteins to putrefy, and fats to become rancid. Not only is this highly irritating to the intestinal lining, it can cause new toxins to be created and absorbed, which will cause further symptoms. Poor enzyme activity can effectively disrupt the balance of the healthful bacteria that naturally reside in the intestinal tract. Protease enzymes, which digest protein, are largely responsible for keeping the small intestine free from parasites and yeasts such as candida. Enzymes are found in uncooked whole foods, and they are extremely heat sensitive. And any cooking temperature above 118 degrees will destroy these delicate enzymes. So this includes most cooking and baking, blanching, pasteurizing, canning, and certainly microwaving. Almost all traditional societies incorporate some form of raw enzyme-rich food into their diets, such as raw dairy foods, fish, vegetables, and or fruits. Ultimately, it's best to choose organic organic varieties of raw foods. Pesticides not only block a plant's absorption of nutrients needed for enzyme production, but also prohibit the body's enzyme systems. Nature provides the needed enzymes. For example, avocados will have a high amount of lipase to digest its fat, and a pear contains more amylase to break down carbohydrates. Although most fruits and vegetables contain enzymes, several foods are abundantly endowed, including extra virgin olive oil, raw honey, figs, sprouts, and many tropical fruits including dates, bananas, papaya, and pineapple. Dr. Howell also observed that salt is a powerful enzyme activator. This typically comes from the minerals that you find in sea salt, not table salt. 
The process of fermenting raw sauerkraut or kimchi is a good example of this, and also culturing, like what you find with raw yogurt and kefir, actually make a food enzyme-enhanced and gives a boost to the pre-digesting ability of enzymes. So, for example, during milk fermentation, up to 40% of the lactose, the sugar you find in milk, may be broken down. These fermented foods should be added into your daily diet, even after being subjected to heat, fermented and cultured foods are more easily absorbed because they've been pre-digested by enzymes. Similarly, cooked meats that have been first well-aged or marinated present less of a strain on the digestive system. These methods of food preparation have been used for centuries, and in this way, ethnic groups that consume large amounts of cooked meat usually include fermented vegetables or condiments like sauerkraut or pickled vegetables with their meals. Optimal wellness begins with proper absorption, and enzymes are the mechanics that allow that to happen. There are many benefits of enzymes beyond digestion. So when you're cooking, try to lightly steam or bake, stew or stir fry, or even use a slow cooker like a crock pot. Try to eat as few overprocessed and overcooked foods as possible. So this means ditching all the fast food that's so available, of course. A good goal is a diet that's 50% raw or enzyme enhanced, which means, again, fermented and cultured foods. And I've often said that digestion begins on the plate, which includes like what you choose and how small you cut it up, how long you chew it, and hopefully you're sitting down and taking your time to eat a meal. We're all guilty of not doing these things now. And not doing any of these things really impair digestion and put enormous stress on the pancreas to produce all the enzymes needed to break down all this food. So for extra support, taking digestive enzyme supplements prior to each meal, like with the first bite of food, can be extremely helpful to take the burden off the pancreas. In fact, Dr. Howell actually advocated making deposits in what he called one's enzyme bank account through supplementation. He actually believed that the enzymes available to us in raw food are only enough to digest their own particles in that food. So ultimately, both food and supplement enzymes can really help to take enormous pressure off your digestive organs and help you to get the maximum nutrition out of what you're eating. And if you are going to take digestive enzyme supplements, try to take one with a broad range that covers fat, protein, carbs, and fiber, and also all kinds of sugar. You don't have to refrigerate digestive enzyme supplements, but do try to keep them away from excessive heat, as again, anything over 118 degrees, which can easily be achieved in a hot car in a parking lot in summertime, will denature the enzymes, rendering them useless. Try to take them at least with one meal a day, ideally your largest meal, I would certainly take them if you go out to eat, because you don't know where your food comes from. And even if you like to eat late at night, these are all good times to take enzymes. I take them with every single meal, because I want to take as much pressure off my digestive organs as possible, because it's a great way to reduce stress on the whole body. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.